the entire story of North and South Korea. The Korean Peninsula, a land of rich history and profound cultural heritage, occupies a prominent place in the complex tapestry of East Asian history. Situated in Northeast Asia, this peninsula is characterized by its unique geographical features, which have played a pivotal role in shaping its history and culture over millennia. To truly understand the story of North and South Korea, one must delve into the deep-rooted history and cultural influences that have shaped the lives and destinies of the Korean people. The Korean Peninsula, extending southward from the Asian continent, is bounded by the Yellow Sea to the west, the Sea of Japan, or East Sea to the east, and the Korean Strait to the south. Its rugged terrain, characterized by mountain ranges and numerous river valleys, has profoundly influenced the course of Korean history. The formidable mountains, such as the Baekdu Dagon Range, running down the peninsula's length, have not only provided a natural defense against invasion, but have also served as the backdrop for the spiritual beliefs and myths of the Korean people. This challenging geography has also influenced settlement patterns, with people historically clustering in the fertile river valleys and coastal plains. These areas, such as the Han River Basin in the north and the Nakdong River Basin in the south, became the cradles of Korean civilization and centers of political power. In contrast, the mountainous regions fostered a sense of regionalism and self-sufficiency among the Korean people. The peninsula's coastline, with its numerous bays and inlets, has facilitated maritime trade and interactions with neighboring regions. It has also played a crucial role in Korea's relations with neighboring countries, as seafaring peoples from China, Japan, and beyond sought access to Korea's shores. The geographical location of the Korean Peninsula, wedged between the major East Asian powers, made it susceptible to external influences, leading to a complex web of cultural exchanges and conflicts throughout its history. The early history of the Korean Peninsula is steeped in legend and myth, with ancient texts like the Semguk Sagi and the Semguk Yusa recounting the stories of Korea's legendary founding by Dengon and the three kingdoms of Gogoryeo, Baekje, and Silla. These kingdoms, which emerged in the first century BC, engaged in a contentious struggle for dominance over the peninsula for centuries. One of the most significant early cultural influences on Korea came from China, as Chinese Confucianism, Buddhism, and writing systems were introduced to the Korean peninsula. The adoption of Confucianism, in particular, had a profound impact on Korean society, shaping its political and social structures. The spread of Buddhism brought with it new art forms, architecture, and a deep spiritual connection to the Korean people. In the 7th century, the Silla Kingdom unified the Korean Peninsula, leading to the emergence of the Unified Silla Period. During this time, Korea became a center of East Asian culture and scholarship, with Buddhist monks traveling to China to study and bring back valuable knowledge and texts. The development of the Korean script, Hangul, by King Sejong the Great in the 15th century was a testament to the Korean people's commitment to preserving the unique cultural identity. However, Korea's history was not without external challenges. Invasions from the northern neighbors, such as the Mongols and later the Munches, brought periods of turmoil and disruption. The Chosun Dynasty, which ruled Korea from the late 14th century to the late 19th century, navigated these challenges while preserving Korean culture and Confucian traditions. The introduction of Western ideas and technologies in the late 19th century marked a turning point in Korea's history, leading to the end of the Chosun Dynasty and Japan's colonial rule, which lasted from 1910 to 1945. This period of foreign domination set the stage for the division of the Korean Peninsula and the tumultuous events of the 20th century including the Korean War, which left an indelible mark on the course of Korean history. The Korean Peninsula's geographical location, rugged terrain, and rich history have all played a crucial role in shaping the development of Korea's unique culture and history. From its early myths and legends, to its encounters with neighboring civilizations, and periods of external domination, the Korean Peninsula's story is one of resilience, adaptability, and a strong sense of cultural identity. To fully grasp the narrative of North and South Korea, it is essential to understand the deep-rooted historical and cultural forces that have shaped this dynamic region. The Three Kingdoms period, spanning from the 1st century BC to the 17th century AD, was a pivotal era in Korean history that laid the foundation for the development of the Korean nation. During this time, three major kingdoms emerged on the Korean peninsula, Gogoryeo, Baekje, and Silla, 
each with its unique cultural and political characteristics. Gogorio, located in the northern part of the peninsula, was known for its military strength and territorial expansion. It engaged in conflicts with Chinese dynasties, most notably the Sui and the Tang, and established a powerful state that extended into present-day China and Russia. Bekje, situated in the western part of the peninsula, was recognized for its vibrant culture, trade, and maritime prowess. Bekje maintained close interactions with Japan, influencing Japanese culture and architecture significantly. Silla, in the southeastern part of the peninsula, developed a unique political system and cultural identity. Silla's rulers promoted Buddhism as the state religion, which led to the construction of magnificent Buddhist temples, sculptures, and art, leaving a lasting cultural legacy. During this period, the Korean peninsula was not isolated from external influences. The Silk Road facilitated trade and cultural exchanges with China and Central Asia, introducing new technologies, artistic styles, and belief systems to the Korean people. Additionally, Korean kingdoms had diplomatic relations with Japan, contributing to the transmission of Chinese culture to the Japanese archipelago. The interactions between the three kingdoms and their neighbors, especially China, played a significant role in shaping early Korean culture and political institutions. Chinese Confucianism and governance systems influenced the Korean aristocracy and bureaucracy, leading to the development of a centralized state. The Korean kingdoms also adopted Chinese writing systems and literary traditions, contributing to the establishment of a written Korean language. This transformation paved the way for the creation of Korean script Hangul centuries later. Japanese influences, particularly from the Baekje Kingdom, impacted Japan's culture and architecture. Baekje artisans and scholars introduced Buddhism and Chinese culture to Japan, leaving a profound mark on Japanese civilization. The Three Kingdoms period eventually gave way to the unified Silla period in the 7th century, when the Silla Kingdom succeeded in unifying the Korean peninsula. This era marked a consolidation of political power and cultural achievement. One of the most significant developments during the unified Silla period was the promotion of Buddhism as the state religion. Under the reign of King Seyong of Silla, Buddhism thrived, leading to the construction of grand temples such as Bulguska and Seo Kilgurum, which are now UNSCO World Heritage Sites. These temples featured intricate Buddhist sculptures and artwork that continued to be celebrated for their artistic excellence and religious significance. Buddhism not only played a central role in the spiritual life of the Korean people, but also contributed to the spread of culture and knowledge. Korean monks embarked on journeys to China to study Buddhist texts and bring them back to Korea. These texts became the foundation for the Korean written language, Hangul, which was created during the subsequent Goryeo dynasty. Despite its cultural achievements, the unified Silla period was not without internal strife and external threats. Regional nobility often challenged central authority, leading to political instability. Moreover, the influence of neighboring kingdoms such as the Tang Dynasty in China posed both opportunities and challenge for the Silla Kingdom. The decline of a unified Silla was hastened by the emergence of a powerful warlord and rebellions. In the late 9th century, a coup led by General Zheng Yi deposed the Silla monarchy and established the later Three Kingdoms period, marking the end of the unified Silla era. The Goryeo Dynasty, spanning from 918 to 1392, marked a crucial period in the history of the Korean Peninsula. It was founded by King Taeho, who emerged victorious in a tumultuous period of political fragmentation and strife following the decline of the unified Silla. Taeho's establishment of the Goryeo Dynasty marked a return to centralized rule and stability, uniting the Korean Peninsula under a single monarchy. King Taeho's reign was marked by the consolidation of power and the establishment of a strong centralized government. He implemented a new system of government based on Confucian principles, emphasizing meritocracy and bureaucratic efficiency. This reformed governance structure provided a foundation for stability and prosperity that would define the early Goryeo period. Taeho's successors further solidified Goryeo's rule over the peninsula, including the Northern Territories. The dynasty's name Goryeo also served as the origin of the modern name Korea. During this period, Buddhism continued to flourish, with the construction of grand temples and the spread of Buddhist teachings. However, the dynasty's most enduring legacy in the realm of culture would be the development of the Korean script, Hangul. Goryeo's relation with the neighboring powers, particularly China and the Mongols, played a significant role in shaping the dynasty's history. China's influence on Goryeo was profound, as the Korean monarchy adapted many aspects of Chinese culture and governance. Chinese Confucianism and bureaucracy were integrated into Goryeo state, influencing its political structure and educational systems. 
However, it was the Mongol invasions that had the most significant impact on Goryeo during this period. In the 13th century, Goryeo faced a series of devastating Mongol invasions led by Genghis Khan's successors, culminating in the establishment of the Mongol Empire's control over the Korean peninsula. Goryeo initially resisted Mongol rule, but eventually capitulated, leading to a period of Mongol dominance that lasted for nearly a century. During this time, Goryeo was under Mongol suzerainty and had to pay tribute to the Mongol Empire. Despite the loss of political autonomy, Goryeo continued to maintain its distinct cultural identity and traditions. The Mongol period also saw significant cultural exchanges between Korea, China, and the Mongol Empire, contributing to the development of Korean culture and the arts. The Mongol Yuan dynasty in China promoted the use of Confucianism and the Chinese script, but Goryeo clung to its distinctive cultural elements. It was during this period of foreign rule that the Korean script Hangul was invented. King Sejong the Great in the late 14th century saw the need for the script that would be accessible to all Koreans, regardless of social class or education. Hangul, with its simple and logical alphabet, was created to fulfill this purpose and promote literacy among the Korean population. The development of Korean culture and the creation of Hangul represent significant milestones during the Goryeo dynasty. Korean culture during this time was deeply influenced by Buddhism, which had a profound impact on art, architecture, and literature. Goryeo era Buddhist temples, such as Hansia and Bulguksa, were renowned for their architectural beauty and the preservation of important Buddhist scriptures and artifacts. Goryeo's embrace of Confucianism, particularly under the reign of King Sejong, contributed to the development of a uniquely Korean cultural identity. Confucian values, such as filiopeity and social hierarchy, became deeply ingrained in Korean society, influencing both the political system and the education of scholars. However, the most enduring legacy of the Goryeo dynasty in terms of culture and language was the creation of Hangul. King Sejong, in collaboration with the scholars, introduced Hangul in the 15th century as a means to improve literacy among the common people. This innovative script consisted of 14 basic consonants and 10 vowels, making it easy to learn and accessible to a wide range of Koreans. Hangul not only revolutionized the way Koreans communicate, but also played a crucial role in preserving the Korean language and culture. It allowed for the recording of oral traditions, folk tales, and scientific knowledge in a written form accessible to all. This cultural achievement laid the foundation for the future development of Korean literature, science, and education. The Joseon Dynasty, which spanned from 1392 to 1910, marked a significant chapter in Korean history, characterized by political reforms, cultural achievements, and the establishment of a Confucian-based society. Founded by King Taejo, the dynasty emerged after a period of Mongol rule and internal strife during the late Goryeo dynasty. The establishment of the Joseon dynasty was a pivotal moment that set the stage for over five centuries of Korean history. King Taejo, formerly known as Yi Sung Yai, was a military general who led a successful rebellion against the declining Goryeo dynasty. His ascension to the throne as King Taejo marked the beginning of the Joseon dynasty. To solidify his rule, Taejo implemented a series of reforms that aimed to centralize power, reduce the influence of the aristocracy, and promote Confucian values as the guiding principles of the state. One of the most notable achievements of the early Joseon dynasty was the promulgation of the Joseon dynasty's legal code, known as the Gyeongguk Daejeon. This comprehensive legal system served as the foundation for Korean law and governance for centuries to come, emphasizing the importance of justice and the rule of law. The Joseon dynasty's embrace of Neo-Confucianism played a central role in shaping Korean society and governance. Under the influence of Confucian scholars like Yi Huang, Kao Ge, and Yi Il, Yul Guk, Neo-Confucianism became the dominant ideology of the era. This philosophical system emphasized moral cultivation, the importance of filial piety, and adherence to hierarchical societal norms. Neo-Confucianism had a profound impact on the structure of Joseon society. The Joseon government implemented a rigorous civil service examination system known as the Guaojiao, which allowed individuals from all social classes to compete for government positions based on their knowledge of Confucian texts. This matriarchal approach, in theory, provided opportunities for upward mobility and led to a more educated ruling class. However, the hierarchical structure of Joseon society remained deeply entrenched, with a strict class system that divided society into young ban, scholar officials, commoners, and slaves. The young ban class, composed of scholar officials who passed the civil service examinations, held significant political and social power. The influence of Confucianism extended to family life, where patriarchal norms were reinforced. 
Philau piety was considered a fundamental virtue, and respect for elders and ancestors was paramount. This societal structure promoted stability, but also entrenched inequities and limited social mobility. The Joseon dynasty faced numerous external challenges during its long reign, including invasions by neighboring powers. One of the most significant events in Joseon history was the Japanese invasion of Korea in the late 16th century, known as the Imjin War from 1592 to 1598. Kiyotami Hideyoshi, the ruler of Japan, launched these invasions with the aim of conquering Korea and eventually invading China. The Japanese invasion brought widespread devastation to Korea, resulting in the loss of countless lives and cultural treasures. Korean forces, led by the Admiral Yi Sun Sen and the brilliant strategist Yi Ek Ji, engaged in heroic naval battles against the Japanese Navy. Their resistance efforts, coupled with support from Ming China, eventually repelled the Japanese forces. Following the Japanese invasion, Korea experienced another invasion, this time the Manchu Qing Dynasty in the early 17th century. The Manchu invasions, known as the Manchu Invasions of Korea, 1627 and 1636, resulted in the Manchu forces briefly occupying parts of Korea. However, the Joseon Dynasty managed to maintain its sovereignty by paying tribute to the Qing Dynasty and acknowledging its suzerainty. In the aftermath of the Manchu invasions and the internal strife that followed, the Joseon dynasty adopted a policy of isolationism and self-preservation. This period of isolationism is often referred to as the Sakoku policy, similar to Japan's policy during the Edo period. Korea during this time sought to limit external influences and protect its cultural and political integrity. One of the most notable aspects of this isolationist policy was the closure of Korea's borders to most foreign interactions. Trade with other countries was heavily restricted, and limited contact maintained only with King China. This policy of self-imposed isolation contributed to Korea's nickname as the Hermit Kingdom. While isolationism had the intended effect of preserving Korean culture and Confucian values, it also had significant drawbacks. Korea fell behind in terms of technological advancement and scientific progress, which were flourishing in neighboring regions. The isolationist stance would later have implications during the late 19th century, when Korea encountered increased pressure from foreign powers seeking to expand their influence into East Asia. The late 19th century was a period of profound change and challenges for Korea, as the nation found itself caught in the cross-currents of imperialism and geopolitical rivalries in East Asia. The Treaty of Gangwa, signed in 1876, marked the beginning of Korea's gradual opening to foreign influence and intervention. The treaty, known as the Treaty of Amity and Commerce between Korea and Japan, was a result of pressure from Japan, which had recently emerged from its isolationist Sakoku policy. The Treaty of Genghua granted extraterritorial rights to Japanese citizens in Korea and opened three Korean ports to Japanese trade. This marked the start of Korea's exposure to Western ideas, technology, and commerce. However, this opening to foreign influence also began to erode Korea's sovereignty as other foreign powers, including Russia, China, and the United States, sought concessions and influence with the Korean Peninsula. Foreign interest in Korea led to increased diplomatic maneuvering and competition. The Hermit Kingdom found itself in the midst of a complex geopolitical chessboard, with foreign powers vying for influence and exploring internal divisions within Korea's government. This period of vulnerability set the stage for Japan's eventual annexation of Korea. The late 19th and early 20th centuries brought significant challenges to Korea, ultimately culminating in the loss of its sovereignty. In 1910, Korea was officially annexed by Japan, marking the end of the Joseon dynasty and the beginning of a period of brutal colonial rule. The annexation came after years of political maneuvering, economic exploitation, and cultural suppression by Japan. The annexation process was far from voluntary. It followed a series of events that weakened Korea's ability to resist Japanese aggression. Japanese colonial officials exerted control over Korea's administration, economy, and culture. Korean cultural traditions, language, and education were systemically suppressed, and Koreans were forced to adapt Japanese customs and practices. The annexation also brought economic exploitation, as Korea's resources were siphoned off to support Japan's industrialization. Land ownership was concentrated in the hands of Japanese settlers, leading to the disposition of Korean farmers and further economic inequality. The Korean monarchy was abolished, and the Korean people were subject to harsh colonial rule. Resistance to Japanese rule emerged in various forms, including armed uprisings, student protests, and efforts to preserve Korean cultural identity. However, these efforts were often met with brutal repression, and the Korean people faced significant challenges in their struggle for independence. Japanese colonial rule in Korea was marked by harsh repression and cultural assimilation policies. Koreans were subjected to forced labor 
forced conversion to Shintoism and exploitation for the benefit of Japan's imperial ambitions. Resistance movements emerged across the Korean peninsula, with individuals and groups determined to regain their sovereignty and protect their cultural heritage. One notable resistance movement was the March 1st Movement of 1919, a nationwide protest against Japanese colonial rule. Millions of Koreans participated in peaceful demonstrations, demanding independence and the restoration of their rights, despite facing brutal suppression, including mass arrests and killings by Japanese authorities. The March 1st movement marked a significant turning point in Korean history and garnered international attention. Throughout the colonial period, Korean nationalist leaders and intellectuals played a crucial role in preserving Korean culture and organizing resistance efforts. Prominent figures such as Sing Min Ri and Kim Gu led efforts to raise awareness about the plight of Korea under Japanese rule and worked to secure international support for Korean independence. Despite the challenges and sacrifices endured by the Korean people during this period, the desire for freedom and self-determination remained strong. This persistence and resilience would ultimately pave the way for Korea's liberation from Japanese colonial rule and the subsequent establishment of the Republic of Korea, South Korea, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea, in 1945, marking the beginning of a new era in Korean history. World War II concluded with the surrender of Japan in September 1945, marking a pivotal moment in the history of Korea. Japan's defeat ended its colonial rule over Korea, which had endured for 35 years. The surrender came as a result of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the Soviet Union's declaration of war against Japan. The Korean people, who had long endured the hardships and oppression of Japanese colonial rule, celebrated their newfound freedom with a mixture of hope and uncertainty. Liberation from colonial rule was a momentous occasion, and Koreans eagerly anticipated the opportunity to shape their own destiny. However, the end of Japanese rule gave rise to a complex geopolitical situation that would ultimately lead to the division of the Korean peninsula. At the Yalta Conference and the Potsdam Conference in 1945, the Allies had decided to divide Korea temporarily along the 38th parallel, with the United States occupying the southern portion and the Soviet Union occupying the northern portion. This division, initially intended as a temporary measure to facilitate the surrender of Japanese forces and the administration of Korea, would have far-reaching consequences. The division of Korea created two separate and distinct political entities, the Republic of Korea, or South Korea, under American influence and Sigmund Rhee's leadership, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, or North Korea, under Soviet influence and Kim Il-sung's leadership. The division not only had political implications, but also deeply affected the lives of ordinary Koreans, many of whom had family members on both sides of the border. The division of Korea and the emergence of North and South Korea as separate entities were closely tied to the strategic interests of the United States and the Soviet Union during the early years of the Cold War. In the South, the United States played a significant role in shaping the political landscape of South Korea. American occupation forces oversaw the establishment of a democratic government, and Simeon Rhee became the first president of the Republic of Korea in 1948. The United States provided economic and military support to South Korea and viewed the country as a vital ally in its efforts to contain the spread of communism in Asia. In the North, the Soviet Union supported the establishment of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, with Kim Il-sung at its helm. The Soviet Union's influence extended to the establishment of a communist government and the provision of economic and military aid. North Korea's alignment with the communist bloc further solidified the division between the two Koreas. The competing interests of the United States and the Soviet Union in Korea set the stage for the Korean War, which erupted in 1950 when North Korean forces, with the backing of the Soviet Union and China, invaded South Korea. The Korean War was a brutal and devastating conflict that lasted three years and resulted in significant loss of life and destruction. The war eventually reached a stalemate, and an armistice agreement was signed in 1953, effectively ending the hostilities but not leading to a formal peace treaty. As a result, North and South Korea remained technically at war, and the Korean Peninsula remained divided along the 38th parallel. The division of Korea became a symbol of the broader Cold War confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union. The Korean Peninsula became one of the world's most heavily militarized regions, with the Korean Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, serving as a buffer zone between the two Koreas. The Korean War, a conflict that raged from 1950 to 1953, stands as one of the most significant and consequential events in the modern history of the Korean Peninsula. Its origins can be traced back to the complex geopolitical landscape of the post-World War II era, with a series of events leading to the outbreak of hostilities. 
One of the major causes of the Korean War was the division of Korea along the 38th parallel into two separate states, North Korea, or the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, and South Korea, or the Republic of Korea. This division, initially intended as a temporary measure after World War II, had created deep political and ideological rifts between the two Korean states. North Korea, under the leadership of Kim Il-sung and with the support of the Soviet Union and China, embraced communism and sought to reunify the peninsula under its rule. Meanwhile, South Korea, led by President Syng Min Rhee and supported by the United States, exposed democracy and capitalism. Tensions between the two Koreas simmered as each side aspired to unify the peninsula under its respective ideology. Border skirmishes and clashes along the demarcation line became increasingly common. The situation escalated when North Korean forces launched a full-scale invasion of South Korea on June 25, 1950, crossing the 38th parallel and sparking the Korean War. The outbreak of the Korean War was also part of the broader Cold War confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union. Both superpowers had vested interests in the Korean Peninsula, and the rivalry played a significant role in the conflict. The United States saw the Korean War as an opportunity to contain the spread of communism in Asia, while the Soviet Union provided military and diplomatic support to North Korea. The Korean War was marked by a series of major battles and key events that shaped the course of the conflict. One of the early turning points was the Battle of Busan Perimeter, where South Korean and American forces, along with UN support, successfully defended a small enclave in the southeastern part of the Korean Peninsula. This defensive stand prevented the complete conquest of South Korea by North Korean forces. Another significant event was General Douglas MacArthur's daring amphibious landing at Ichiyan in September 1950. This maneuver, codenamed Operation Chromite, led to a successful counteroffensive by UN forces that pushed North Korean forces northward and liberated Seoul, the South Korean capital. As UN forces advanced into North Korea, they encountered Chinese forces, leading to a new phase of the conflict. China's entry into the war in October 1950 escalated the fighting and widened the scope of the conflict. Battles such as the Battle of the Chosun Reservoir and the Battle of Triangle Hill demonstrated the intensity and ferocity of the fighting. The Korean War also saw significant strategic bombings, including the widespread use of napalm by UN forces. The bombing campaign had devastating effects on both military targets and civilian populations, contributing to the war's reputation as a brutal and destructive conflict. Throughout the war, both sides engaged in negotiations to seek a resolution to the conflict. However, the negotiations were often characterized by deadlock and protracted discussions. One of the most famous episodes of the war was the Panmunjom Trust Talks, where discussions took place in the Joint Security Area of the Korean Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ. These talks eventually led to the signing of the Korean Armistice Agreement in 1953. The signing of the Korean Armistice Agreement on July 27, 1953 marked the official end of hostilities in the Korean War. The agreement established a ceasefire, created the Korean Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, as a buffer between North and South Korea, and called for the reparations of prisoners of war. Importantly, the Armistice Agreement did not result in a formal peace treaty, leaving North and South Korea technically still at war to this day. The Korean War had exacted a heavy toll on both sides, resulting in significant loss of life and widespread destruction. The conflict left deep scars on the Korean Peninsula and its people, with families separated by the division of the peninsula. The Armistice Agreement also solidified the division of Korea along the 38th parallel, perpetuating the political and ideological divide between North and South. While the division had initially been intended as a temporary measure, it became a lasting and deeply entrenched feature on the Korean Peninsula. The war's aftermath left a legacy of unresolved issues, including the fate of Korean prisoners of war held by both sides and the division of families separated by the conflict. These humanitarian issues continue to be a source of tension and concern between North and South Korea. The post-Korean War era witnessed a remarkable transformation in South Korea's economic landscape. Ravaged by the conflict and left in ruins, South Korea embarked on a path of recovery and development that would eventually earn it the moniker, the miracle of the Han River. Central to its transformation was a series of visionary leaders, sound economic policies, and a strong work ethic. One of the key architects of South Korea's economic success was President Park Chung-hee, who came to power in the early 1960s. Under his leadership, South Korea adopted a series of economic development plans and policies that emphasized export-oriented industrialization. The government provided incentives and support to key industries, including steel, shipbuilding, and electronics. This proactive approach to economic development, combined with an educated and diligent workforce, led to rapid industrialization and export growth. The cables, large family-owned conglomerates like Samsung, Hyundai, and LG, played a central role in South Korea's economic development. 
these conglomerates diversified into various sectors and became global players in industries such as electronics, automobiles, and construction. The Kebbles' success was due in part to government support, but they also faced criticism for their dominance and concentration of wealth. South Korea's economic achievements were further bolstered by a strong education system that emphasized science and technology. Investments in education and research and development contributed to the country's ability to innovate and compete on the global stage. By the late 20th century, South Korea had emerged as one of the world's major economies with a per capita income that had risen dramatically. The country's transition from war-torn nation to an industrial powerhouse became a model for other developing nations, showcasing the potential for economic growth through investment in technology, education, and industrial development. In North Korea, the post-Korean War era was characterized by the long and authoritarian leadership of Kim Il-sung. Kim Il-sung, who had led North Korea since its founding in 1948, continued to consolidate power and establish a personality cult around himself. His rule was marked by strict control over all aspects of North Korean society, including politics, the economy, and the military. Under Kim Il-sung's leadership, North Korea pursued a policy of ju or self-reliance, which aimed to reduce the country's dependence on foreign powers. While this policy was intended to foster independence, it also led to economic isolation and inefficiency. North Korea's economy, while heavily centralized, struggled to keep pace with the rapid economic growth seen in South Korea. Kim Il-sung's rule also saw the development of a highly centralized and oppressive political system. Dissent and opposition were ruthlessly suppressed with severe consequences for those who dared to challenge the regime. The personality cult around Kim Il-sung portrayed him as a great leader and eternal president, with his image and ideology pervading all aspects of North Korean life. Despite the authoritarianism and isolationism of Kim Il-sung's regime, North Korea did make some advancements in education and healthcare during this period. The government provided universal education and healthcare to its citizens, although these achievements were often overshadowed by the regime's more repressive actions. Kim Il-sung's leadership set the stage for the dynastic rule that would continue in North Korea, with his son Kim Jong-il and grandson Kim Jong-un succeeded him as leaders of the country. The North Korean regime's continued isolation and human rights abuses have remained sources of international concern and tension. The Korean Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, established as a part of the Korean Amnesty Agreement in 1953, became a symbol of the enduring Cold War dynamics on the Korean Peninsula. Stretching for 160 miles and spanning approximately 2.5 miles in width, the DMZ served as a buffer zone between North and South Korea. Throughout the Cold War, the DMZ was heavily fortified, with troops and military installations on both sides. It became one of the most heavily militarized borders in the world, with a constant state of tension and readiness. Incidents and skirmishes along the DMZ were not uncommon, and the area remained a potential flashpoint for renewed conflict. The DMZ also served as a reminder of the unresolved nature of the Korean War. While the Korean Armistice Agreement ended the hostilities, it did not lead to a formal peace treaty. As a result, North and South Korea remained technically at war, with the DMZ serving as the de facto border between the two states. The DMZ also became a site of occasional diplomatic and symbolic interactions between North and South Korea. The Joint Security Area, or JSA, within the DMZ served as a venue for negotiations and meetings between the two Koreas and was the site of several historic summits between North and South Korean leaders. In recent years, efforts have been made to reduce tensions along the DMZ and explore the possibility of denuclearization and peace on the Korean Peninsula. These diplomatic initiatives, including the historic summits between North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and South Korean President Moon Jae-in, as well as the meetings between Kim Jong-un and U.S. President Donald Trump have raised hopes for a peaceful resolution to the long-standing conflict. The late 20th century witnessed a significant political development in South Korea, foremost amongst them being the process of democratization. South Korea's transformation from an authoritarian regime to a vibrant democracy was a remarkable and historic journey that unfolded over several decades. One of the key turning points in South Korea's democratization was the Gwangju Uprising in 1980. Citizens of Gwangju, a city in the southwestern part of the country, staged mass protests against the authoritarian rule of President Chun do hwan The government's violent crackdown on the protesters resulted in a tragic loss of life and widespread outrage. This event galvanized the pro-democracy movement and ignited demand for political change. In the years that followed, South Korea experienced a series of political transitions and upheavals. Pressure from both domestic and international actors, including the United States, played a role in pushing the greater political openness. By the late 1980s, a series of pro-democracy protests, known as the June Democracy Movement, led to significant political reforms. In 1987, a new constitution was adopted, 
which included direct presidential elections and term limits. This marked a major step toward democratic governance, as South Korea moved away from the authoritarian rule that had characterized much of its post-Korean War history. In December 1987, Roh Tae-woo was elected as the first president under the new constitution, marking the beginning of South Korea's democratic era. Subsequent elections saw the peaceful transition of power between different political parties, demonstrating the strength of South Korea's democratic institutions. Civil society organizations, including labor unions and student groups, continued to play a crucial role in advocating for democratic principles and holding elected officials accountable. The democratization of South Korea also coincided with significant economic growth and modernization. The country's transition to democracy was accompanied by a strengthening of civil liberties, press freedom, and the rule of law. South Korea's transformation into a vibrant democracy positioned it as a regional and global player in the late 20th century. In North Korea, the late 20th century saw the continued dominance of the ruling Kim dynasty and the perpetuation of the Juk ideology, a state philosophy developed by Kim Il-sung. Juk, often translated as self-resilience, served as the foundation of North Korea's political, economic, and cultural identity. Juk ideology emphasized the supreme leadership of Kim Il-sung, portraying him as the great leader and the embodiment of the nation's collective will. A personality cult surrounding Kim Il-sung permeated all aspects of North Korean society, with his image adorning public spaces, classrooms, and households. Juk ideology also emphasized the pursuit of self-sufficiency and self-reliance in all areas of life, from economics to national defense. During this period, North Korea remained highly isolated from the international community. The government tightly controlled information, and there was limited interaction with the outside world. The regime's isolationism was further reinforced by its pursuit of a military-first policy, known as Sanggang, which prioritized the military over other sectors of society. The personality cult and strict control over North Korean society led to the suppression of dissent and violation of human rights. The regime's concentration camps, where political prisoners were subjected to forced labor and harsh conditions, became a source of international concern and condemnation. Kim Il-sung's rule was marked by a confrontational approach to South Korea and the United States. Tensions between North and South Korea persisted, and periodic flare-ups along the Korean Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ. The North Korean regime's pursuit of nuclear weapons and ballistic missile programs further exacerbated regional and global tensions. Throughout the late 20th century, efforts were made to improve inter-Korean relationships and seek reconciliation between North and South Korea. These efforts were characterized by a mix of dialogue, cooperation, and setbacks. One notable attempt at reconciliation was the 1972 joint communique between North and South Korea, which affirmed a goal of peaceful reunification and the principle of self-reliance. However, the agreement did not lead to substantive changes in the relationship between the two Koreas. Inter-Korean dialogue continued sporadically in the years that followed, with notable moments such as the 1991 Inter-Korean Basic Agreement, which aimed to reduce military tension and promote exchanges. However, progress remained limited and tensions persisted. The late 20th century also witnessed efforts to engage North Korea in diplomatic talks with the United States and other regional powers. The agreed framework of 1994, for example, aimed to freeze North Korea's nuclear program in exchange for energy aid and diplomatic normalization. However, implementation of the agreement faced challenges, leading to its eventual collapse. In 2000 and 2007, historic summits between North and South Korean leaders Kim Jong-il and Kim Dae-jung and later between Kim Jong-il and Roh Moo-hyun, raised hope for improved relations. These meetings resulted in joint declarations that outlined steps toward reconciliation and cooperation. Despite these positive steps, inter-Korean relationships remain complex and often subject to fluctuations. Tensions and provocations, including nuclear tests and missile launches by North Korea, continue to pose challenges to regional stability. The 21st century ushered in a new era of challenges and complexities for the Korean Peninsula prominently marked by North Korea's nuclear ambitions. North Korea conducted its first nuclear test in 2006, setting off a series of nuclear tests and missile launches that raised international alarm and prompted widespread condemnation. These actions triggered a series of diplomatic efforts to address the North Korean nuclear issue. International negotiations, often referred to as the Six-Party Talks, involving North Korea, South Korea, China, Japan, Russia, and the United States, were initiated to find a peaceful solution to the crisis. While these talks resulted in agreements aimed at denuclearization, they were frequently beset by setbacks and North Korean provocations. The issue remains unresolved, and North Korea has continued to develop its nuclear capabilities, heightening regional and global security concerns. The leadership of North Korea witnessed a historic transition in the 21st century. Kim Jong-il, who had ruled North Korea for decades, passed away in 2011, 
leading to the ascension of his son, Kim Jong-un, as the country's leader. Kim Jong-un has continued the policies of his predecessors, emphasizing the regime's control and militarization. Under Kim Jong-un's leadership, North Korea has conducted numerous missile tests, including intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBM launches, and continued to develop its nuclear arsenal. These actions have led to heightened tensions in the region and provoked international sanctions. The division of the Korean Peninsula remains one of the most enduring legacies of the 20th century, and it continues to pose challenges and complexities for both North and South Korea. While there is a shared desire for reunification among many Koreans, the political, ideological, and security divides have persisted for over seven decades. The prospects for reunification remain uncertain, as the two Koreas have diverged significantly in terms of governance, ideology, and living standards. South Korea, with its thriving democracy and advanced economy, faces the potential economic and social burdens of integrating a struggling North Korea. Additionally, geopolitical factors in the interest of regional powers, including the United States, China, and Russia, have contributed to the complex dynamics surrounding the Korean Peninsula. The future of the Korean Peninsula will depend on a delicate balance of diplomatic efforts, international cooperation, and the willingness of all parties involved to seek a peaceful resolution to the division. As of the 21st century, North and South Korea remain separate and distinct entities, each with its own political system, leadership, and challenges. South Korea has continued to thrive as a democratic nation with a dynamic economy, while North Korea remains isolated and under authoritarian rule. The Korean Peninsula remains a hotspot of geopolitical tensions with far-reaching regional implications. The North Korean nuclear issue, in particular, has led to concerns about nuclear proliferation and has shaped the strategic calculations of neighboring countries, including South Korea, Japan, and China. The presence of U.S. military forces in South Korea, combined with ongoing tensions, underscores the fragile peace on the peninsula. The potential for miscalculation or provocations presents a constant challenge to regional stability. Despite the challenges and tensions, there is always hope for a peaceful resolution and reunification on the Korean peninsula. Diplomatic efforts, including summits between North and South Korean leaders and international negotiations, offer paths toward dialogue and reconciliation. The Korean people on both sides of the border maintain a deep desire for reunification and the restoration of their shared cultural and historical heritage. The future of the Korean Peninsula will depend on the collective efforts of the international community, the resilience of the Korean people, and the commitment to peaceful coexistence and dialogue. The hope for a unified and prosperous Korea remains a powerful aspiration in the 21st century and beyond. Thank you for joining us on this remarkable journey through time. Until next time, may the story of North and South Korea inspire us to strive for a world where divisions are healed and dreams are realized.